Hey there guys, welcome back to Artifact Studios. This is Tutorial Tuesday Season 3 about Neurofunk Drum and Bass. And this is the episode number 7. And today I just want to continue on the track. I've been working on the bass last week, um, which I think sounds pretty cool now. Um, I did some work though um, between this week's video and last week's video. Um, not that I added a whole bunch of new stuff. I just played around with the bass a little bit. You know, trying to figure out some different stuff. I'm just going to play you this and then I'm actually going to go and start making some music. Um, all the bases are turned off right now. Um, so you're not really going to hear those. And let's just get to it. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Um, this is where the bass is going to kick in. And this is where the build-up is going to start. I've already made a faster kick drum. Um, which is basically just that same kick drum that we had. Um, just playing a little bit of a faster rhythm. And that will actually become the build-up. Then the drop is going to kick in right here. So... I'm going to put on my headphones and let's get started working on this. Um, I played around with the bass a little bit, as I told you already. Um, we had that particular Reese, which is not really a Reese, but we can use it as a Reese, as if it is a Reese. And that's actually what we're going to do. Now, I played around a little bit with the actual resampled version that I threw in a sampler and I basically played around a little bit with the uh, pitch envelopes and the filter and I must say I got a pretty interesting result so we have I have a bass now that sounds like this So I'm using the pitch envelope, not on the start of the sound. I'm not actually creating a transient, but I'm creating um, I'm creating a 24 semitone pitch bend upwards right at the end of each one fourth note. Now you might think, what on the on the end of each one fourth note? Well, I actually went in. And um, if you click this little attack, or decay, or release, if you click any of those, it switches to the actual slope, which is this. Now by default, it will be at zero, and that will result in this, which is okay. But I want to capture that initial um, that initial tone, the note that we have when the sound starts, and I can do that 
by bringing that slope all the way down to a minus 100%. Now that means that the first part of this sound is actually still going to be a G note. Um, when we have it at zero, it will immediately start pitching up from the start, uh, from, this, from the moment we hit a note. So um, if I bring this down to minus 100, it will actually take some time before it will start pitching up. Um, it's now not pitching up linearly, but it's actually pitching up in an exponential kind of way. And that really makes it um, easier to work with. You know, the, the start of this note is now still a G. And what I did is I went in and I played around with that attack time and the decay time. Now, the decay is really short and the attack time is 364. Now, I played around a little bit with that to make the, the highest point of the pitch bend. So the point where it is actually plus 24 semitones. And I um I managed to uh, put that right at the end of the one fourth measure. So when we hit a note, so for instance, um, right here a note hits, um, it will be. Let's just say that this part of the note is the first part of the envelope, and then this part is the second part of the envelope. So I had to fine tune that and depending on what tempo you're using, you'll have to change these attack values. But by playing around with that, you can actually make that peak sit right here, right in the middle of that note. Now, the great thing about that is, is then that when I use a one fourth note, so this is a one second note, um, this is a one fourth note and it will mean that right at the end of that note, we get a pitch bend upwards and then it will start a new note and then we don't get that second that second part of the envelope, but it will actually re-trigger the envelope and start at that G note again. So <clears throat> you can really create interesting stuff. Now, this one is not a one second, but not a one fourth. It has that extra additional one eighth measure. So... Here we will actually get the first part of that envelope and then we only get half of the second part of the envelope. So we just get a small portion. So I think this is just long enough to let that envelope go back to, uh, to zero semitones. So it's just um, playing around a little bit with it and you can create really interesting stuff. So by doing that, I now have that sort of like a looping kind of thing. Now you can see the notes, um, I can bring that up and just go to the first measure. Now you can see what I'm doing. I'm making room for the kick drum. So you could do this with side chaining, of course. You can side chain um, the bass to the kick and make room for the kick drum that way. Um, you could also use volume automation, which is basically doing the same thing as um, sidechain compression. You're just doing it with manual automation on the volume. It's also a way. But another way to make room for your kick drum is just cut out the bass completely during that first initial kick drum. So that's what I'm doing right here. As you can see, I'm just taking out that first hit. I actually had it like that. So we would get that kind of thing. But I took that out, and now we just get that. But if I um, play this with the drum, with the kick drum, for instance, now with those two double notes at the start, you can hear the kick drum and the bass, they overpower each other. So I could add sidechain compression to bring that bass down, but I tried it, and it, it's not going to sound good at least not on this bass. So I decided to take out that first bass hit. And you can really hear how that kick drum ha has a lot of power. You can really hear the low end in the kick, but you can also really hear that the bass has a lot of power. So now we're actually getting the best of both. And I don't have to bother with um, adding sidechain compression to this. 
I might do that in the end, but <clears throat> it won't really make that first hit um, quieter because it's not falling in time with a kick drum. So it's a little trick that you can use um, and I like it. It definitely makes for easier mixing. So that being said, I, I, I played around with that bass a little bit and I did the same for that second part where the buildup is actually going to start. I played around with it, tried to get some cool ideas and just some inspiration for this track. Um, the bass layers that I have so far might actually not end up in the tune, but it's just all there for inspiration, trying out things and see what works and what doesn't. Now, I do know that this particular pattern works, and I also know that this whole setup of the sampler works. So I could now go in and change these start positions and get a whole bunch of different sounds that way. Now, I think I've talked quite a lot already. Um, I'm talking for 10, 12 minutes already, so let's just get on with this. Um, I can play you the second part of the where the build-up is actually going to start. Now here I might actually want to do some side-chaining. And here we have the high pass filter coming in. And then we're actually gonna dr drop into the drop. I might actually wanna, that's pretty cool, drop into the drop. <laughs> so I might actually wanna cut out the bass during um, this part, but we'll have to see when we get to um, working on the drop. And that's when you actually can find out how you can um, transition from the build-up into the drop really depends on what kind of drop I'm actually going to use. So I did some more. I have a couple of other bass layers that sound slightly different, but it's sort of like doing the same thing and they're all playing the same pattern. So um, that second one sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so this one is quite interesting as well. Um, I did some more to this than what I did with the other ones. Um, by default, this was the patch that we had. Sounds good, but I decided to try some other stuff. Um, first of all, I have that same kind of attack stuff going on. Oh, wait. I forgot a really important thing about the patch, about the last one. Um, on the pitch envelope, there is a really cool setting that I found um, that I hadn't used before. And that's this last part right here, the looping mode. If we click that, normally it's set, it's set, it's set to none and we won't get any looping. Now, right here, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, but that's because we're using pretty short notes. So let's just get all of those notes out of there. And let's put in a longer note. So now you can hear. That's how it sounds without the looping. So we, you do hear that initial um, pitch bend. Which is really cool and I actually like <laughs> The way this sounds. This could really be a great dubstep bass too. Um, but then I found out about that looping mode. Now we have multiple different things. Um, we have the loop section, which actually gives us a time in milliseconds. And now that pitch envelope will start to loop, which is really great. And we also have a beep mode, and beep mode will actually sync to the BPM. How great is that? One second notes, we can set it to one eighth. Oh, that's really weird. 
So one eighth note actually starts pitching it up slowly. That's interesting. I don't know why it would do that. That's quite cool. Now, um, the thing I tried out, um, for instance, setting it to uh, one fourth. That's that. Okay, so it sounds like it's looping the decay. It's looping it right at the end of that one fourth measure. At least that's what it sounds like. Interesting. Um, you have a one third. Now it actually um, starts looping when the envelope is done, when it's completely over, so it will actually restart the envelope. Um, and that was actually what I wanted to show you. Now, one third is cool if I can if I turn on the metronome. We're not using triplets in this track, so we might not want to use one thirds. Um, if I use one second. We now get that looping of the envelope, and that's really interesting. Um, we have some more values, um, like one. You can hear how that really makes great, interesting sounds. Um, I added that one second, um, and that's pretty cool. You can just play around with that and have great fun. Now, that next bass that I have, um, it's basically doing the same thing. So it's doing the same thing initially, but we're having a plus 36 semitones um, pitch bend. So it goes up a little bit higher than the other one. And um, I'm using a beat um, a, a beat looping mode set to repeat on one. So it's actually taking one bar. Um, the long note now will, will now sound like that. Whew, that sounds nasty. Um, you can hear we're using a pretty short loop on this one um, and that is really cool um, in combination with a pitch band so when we go up and that's cool because that actual pitch envelope will, will keep on repeating itself even though we're pitching upwards or downwards so we can really create really um really complicated pitch band and pitch bands with this i mean i could actually go in and start um pitch bending this down again. So let's say we move it up and then we go down. I have to check what my setting is on the MIDI tab. Let's make this 12. So now we will actually go up in pitch right here, one semi, well, one octave, and then we start pitching down again. But that pitch bend, that pitch bend envelope will keep on repeating itself. And that's really fucking insane. You can get so much interesting stuff with that. So, um, I'm just gonna do that again. So, um, I did that, and as you can hear, it works pretty well. Um, there is some kind of a weird high pitchy kind of sound right at the start of the note. Um, I might be able to take that out by just bringing that attack time up a little bit. And that actually sounds pretty cool as well, just giving it a little bit more of a slope at the start of the sound. Can actually sound pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to do that for this one. Um, that particular initial hit, 
I can take that out by changing the start position um, because that's most likely coming from the place where this is starting. So I will just change the start position until I find a spot where you don't have that weird high pitchy sound at the start of the note. Um, it becomes really apparent right there. But it still sounds good. And we could work with this. Um, for instance, I know the time for the pitch envelope is 364 to make it um, at the end of that note. So I can do that here as well. Which will make it sound a bit different. And because it's a higher uh, pitch envelope, it goes up to 36 semitones, um, you get a totally different sound. And you just need to remember that as soon as you start pitching things um, inside Sampler, that the sample that you're using will speed up and speed down. And that will give you a lot of control over what you want to do. Um, I have a third one. Let's see how this one sounds. This one has a lot more low end to it, and that's because I'm using the um, the pitch envelope and the filter envelope in a different way. Um, I have the um, pitch envelope set to uh, really short decay time and no attack, so it's actually giving a more transient kind of sound. Um, it's really faint. Um, might want to take that attack down. So you can hear it um, on the longer note. You can hear that, that pitch envelope if I turn off the filter. You can hear that pitch envelope going. Um, it's actually looping on a uh, one-fourth measure. Which is definitely giving it a really nice sound. But then I took the filter and I changed the filter a bit, I changed the amount, and I'm using the filter envelope with a long attack time. So it's actually um, starting at this position, then it's going to um, it's gonna move upwards, and then it's gonna move back down in a really short decay time. And that will actually be repeated in a one-fourth measure as well. That's pretty cool, I can make that longer. So now we're actually getting um, much more of an interesting sound. I'm uh, using a beat repeat of two bars, so that gives plenty of time for this envelope to reach this position and then back down again. And then it's going to restart this, so it's actually going to move back down to here, do that all again. And you can hear that on every bar. Two bar. Yeah, on every two bar you can hear that it restarts. That's pretty cool. You can definitely create interesting stuff with that. Um, I put this up one for which makes it sound a bit darker. Still really good. Now, I have a final one. And I think I forgot something else. Yep. I keep on forgetting stuff today. What's this? Um, I also have this one. And in the, in the second resample, so we're going back again one step. In the second one that I, uh, that I made, I tried something else. And that's called track by track detuning. Or at least that's how I think it was frequent or evoke one of the two. Um, they call it track by track detuning. And what you do is you have one audio track or one MIDI track with um, multiple of the same sounds stacked on top of each other. And you're actually detuning those from each other. So the same thing happens when you have two oscillators in a synth and you detune one slightly from the other. You get that phasey, flangery kind of sound. That is actually the sound that I wanted to create and you can still do that inside Sampler. So I took that, um, that particular instrument that I have right here and I just need to see if I haven't really changed anything. But 
it looks like I haven't. But just to be sure, I'm gonna take these out. So um, this is the sub. Um, we have that EQ on there so that we only get the sub from this one. I'm gonna duplicate this one. This is gonna be the mid, so I'm uh, gonna turn this into a high pass. And now I'm actually gonna duplicate the mid track. So now we have two of those which are completely the same and now I actually can start detuning this one. Now one thing I also did is I brought the spread up to 50% on both of the mid layers so it will actually sound wider. And then I went into the sample and right here we've got the detuning option and I brought that up to plus four cents. So don't don't um, think these are semitones, they are not, these are scents, so it's actually your fine tuning. And um, bringing that up to plus four will mean that the difference between these two is really small in terms of pitch. And then we get that really um, reesey, phasing kind of sound. So it will now sound like this. And if we compare that to without that second layer, it's much more static and you can hear that high pitch sound on the, um, in the higher frequencies, which is definitely adding a lot of um, movement to the bass as well. So if I then play this one, You can really hear how that definitely um, becomes more interesting by using that track by track detuning. And the reason I now remembered that is because I did the same thing on the fourth one that I tried out playing with. And let's just see how this one sounds. I think this one was quite, quite heavy. So we're not using any looping in this one. I'm just using the pitch envelope again. Um, this time I'm not using uh, that sloping. I'm, I'm just using a linear slope and it's pretty short. So it just adds that kind of sound and I'm using a really long re uh, repeat. So it's one over, um, it's one and a half bars. So. Sounds okay, I played around with the um, oscillator as well. I don't really think this one sounds the best of them all, but um, I still tried adding that second layer with the detuning on it, so plus four. And made it sound better, definitely. But I don't really think I'm going to use that one. It's going to be either that first one. Because I really like the sound of that one. And the second one is really cool as well. So that's it for um, what I did in between the last couple of videos. Um, let's see what we can do. So I'm going to turn that off for now because I don't want to have that interfering with everything else I'm working on. And the first thing I wanted to try... ...is putting a pitch band sub kind of thingy on here. So I'm gonna create a new MIDI track. And on this MIDI track I'm gonna put an operator. And then I'm gonna make a node right here. And just make a G node. 
So I'm having a pretty low G note right here now. And I have to transpose this down. So I'm going to transpose this down way further than the actual sub bass range. So this is actually an octave below what I would use as normal sub. Um, normal sub, I would put it at minus 12. That's a pretty decent sub um, range. But if we bring it down to, for instance, minus 24, we're going to have a much lower bass. Um, I can bring it down to minus 36. And we won't actually be able to hear the bass at all. Um, that's actually what I want because then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna turn on the pitch envelope. And I'm gonna bring this all the way up. So now we're getting a 12 semitones pick pitch envelope, and I want to bring this up to 48. So now we have a bass drum. Make that longer. Let's just make it 36. I can bring that initial down to zero, it doesn't really matter anyway. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, let's see how that sounds. I think that sounds really good. It definitely gives that section a bit more weight and it um, it sort of like introduces the bass as well because you suddenly get that sub hit. And it layers nicely with the cinematic percussion as well. Yeah, I quite like that. So um, let's just keep that in there. Um, sub pitch drop. Um, I'm going to place this in the bass group. So now I'll have to turn that bass group on. And all the other bass sounds are turned off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I am going to take out that high pass automation, because I don't need that over here. And I can take all these out as well. Those are just the long notes that I placed in here um, to demonstrate what I did. Um, other thing I want to do is give this the right color. So do it like that. Now, I might want to put a synth node right before that drop. Yeah, that might be cool. Let's create another MIDI track. And... I need to see where. It needs to be around here. So let's just create a MIDI clip of that size. Um, I'm gonna make it a D note. See how that sounds. Now, What plugin are we going to use for this? Um, it might be interesting to just go through some presets and see how that sounds, but I don't want to want to give you uh, uh, a couple of hours of browsing through presets. So um, let's just do a really fast Super Saw kind of thing. We might actually want to change this later on. It's just that we have sort of like a visualization of how this is going to sound and so that we know if this is going to work or not. So let's just listen to it. The note is correct, I guess, because we get that. And then we drop down to a G, so I think this might actually work. Um, let's bring the unison up a 
let's just do that. Um, Or maybe not. Let's just keep it without detuning. And I'm going to enable the sub. And I'm going to turn the sub level all the way down. And that is because I can then use the um, FM mode from the sub. So I have the FM coming from the sub oscillator. And that way we can create really interesting tones. And that's cool, but I really need to bring this down. So we can play around with that, see if we can get something nice. That sounds really weird. <laughs> It's a really weird sound. Okay, um... So, let's just, um... Go back, initialize the preset. Let's just see, I'm gonna take one of my waveforms. Um... I have all these really interesting waveforms, by the way. It sound really great. Um, let's just see what we can get. Interesting wavetable. Mm. Let's just work on something else, because this is definitely going nowhere. Now, what can we do? 
I definitely want to start adding something here, but the biggest question is what? Um, we have that short riser. Um, which I really like, and I'm going to keep it that way. But I might actually want to create another riser. Yeah, let's create some cool risers here. Sound, sounds like a good thing to do. Um, I'm going to do it with sampling, I guess. Let's just put a sampler inside here. And let's try and find a sample that I can throw in here. Um, let's go into resampling, because those are... Um, actually given with the right key. Okay, that's a really weird sound. <laughs> Let's, um go to Vengeance, because I know Vengeance has a lot of these sounds that are labeled with a certain key, and that's great for stuff like this. Um, so let's see how we can turn something like that around. Um, are these laid? Yeah, these are labeled by key. So, I'm looking for a G, because G is the key I'm working in. Um, I could also take one of these other ones and just pitch it. it gives you the same result. For instance, that one, which is a C-sharp, so I'm just going to throw it in there, um, say that it is a C-sharp, and then I need to create a MIDI clip, and I'm going to add a G note right in there. So now we get that. We just get that sample playing um, in a G note, by the way, that's really great. Now I'm going to turn on the um, looping mode. Let's just create a small loop. And I'm going to link start position to the loop mode as well. I just want to get that. be able to reverse this we could do something like that and what we then can do is we can Go to the MIDI part, and or we could do it in a pitch envelope thing, which is also good. Um, turn on that pitch envelope, and I'm going to set this to 24. I'm going to play around with the attack time so that it's gonna match um, the length of this, so I need to do this by ear. So, that would actually sound pretty cool. Um, then we have our filter. Um, we can use that filter to create interesting stuff. I'm going to set this to a notch and a high pass, I guess. And I can automate that over time, so that it goes down, like that. And I quite like the sound of it now, it sounds pretty good. Um, let's bring that spread up a little bit. 
That sounds great. Um, I am going to bring up the attack as well. So it's really going to come in gradually. And then I'm also going to add um, an auto filter. Because I don't want to have that, um, that high frequencies during the start of this sound. So I'm really just going to give it that automation, so to speak, like that. Gives it a bit of a different sound. Um, let's add a little bit of chorus to this as well. Um, bring the dry wet down and let's place it around there. This gives it a bit more of an interesting sound. Um, let's see how this sounds in context with what we have. Okay, so I think it um, needs to come up a little bit faster. So we're going to bring this one up. I'm going to bring that level up as well. And I'm going to change this to 12. So I'm looking at where in the part where we are, I want to have that, that decay kick in right here. So that's just a matter of... That sounds good. Um, make the decay time a little bit longer. sounds quite cool. Um, I'm not using the filter envelope yet. I could do that. And just loop that. Do something cool with it. Maybe give it some attack. Or not. So I'm going to play around with this a bit more. I'm going to bring it up. Mm, I think that sounds quite okay, but I want to bring this up as well. So I'm going to automate that upwards so we get more stereo width towards the end of that note. Starting to sound okay. I'm gonna add a high pass to it as well. I'm gonna automate that so that we go upwards. Just do it with a nice, nice slope. Um, I can bring this down to here and give it slightly less of a slope. Remove that one. Mm. I can move this down. And I'm still going to move this up a bit. And now we could actually start by um, trying out different samples. Um, so I have this. That sound, which is a G sharp. So I can just put that and set this to a G sharp. And 
And as you can hear, it gives you a totally different kind of tone. Um, bring that in. Mm. Another thing we could do is do this with um, a downwards slope. So I know this is at 2.78. So do that around the same value and then bring the attack all the way down. And then I have to make that slope zero. Which gives it quite an interesting sound. Bring the attack all the way down. So let's see how that sounds. I think that sounds quite good, actually. Um, then we have the bass. So we would have a bass sound. Let's see. Let's just try that one. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to take out all of these and just create. I'm just going to drop this one in here and let's just play around with that. So um, I can turn this on. I think I like that. But I do want to have that faster one right here. That might be quite interesting. Um, bring that to here as well. Um, so now we get this. Duplicate that so that we get that same thing going on again here. Um, I can consolidate that so it's one full clip. And what I want to try is do something with a pitch bend. Um, even though we already have quite some pitch bends in here, I'm going to give it another pitch bend. So you hear that? That note right here really gives it an interesting sound. I think I like it like that. Maybe I can extend it. Um, 
I like it like that. Um, we can play around with this. And I can bring it down. I think this sounds quite quite nice. So I want to have another bass right here in this part. Um, I think something that has more of that classic Reese kind of kind of sound. So I guess something like. Something like that, but with this bass. So I'm gonna duplicate this track and I am going to take this clip out and I'm gonna make a new clip right here. Um, so we have a G node. this down full octave so I'll turn this to 12 and I'm also gonna make this a loop and make that loop really short I'm gonna bring that crossfade up. So that sounds cool. Um play a little bit with that That sounds good, but um, I do want to add a bunch more filtering to this. Um, movement so we can automate that upwards and then down again and just zoom in a bit and I'm gonna move it back up again I 
I think I did. Uh, that sounds quite good. Um, I do want to have a, another bass. Um, I think a good bass for this would be that same bass that we have already. But take out that and just give that bass, make that bass right over there. So I'm gonna do that. And I can duplicate this. So we get. Um, I do want to have this bass do some other stuff than it's doing right now, so I'll just do that. And okay, I just thought for a moment that my microphone stopped working. Um, how long are we recording actually? One hour already. Whoa, time went fast. Um, yeah, I'll just finish this one up and then it's going to be the end of the video. So I want to give this a pitch bendy kind of sound. Um, so I'm going to see what's going on here. I don't want to have the pitch envelope. Mm. I'm gonna make this n a higher note. So five semitones. It's one, two, three, four, five. Would be a C three. Um, I'm gonna make it a D. And I'm gonna bring the MIDI. Let's do it plus two. So now I can actually pitch bend this, and I can pitch bend it down only two semitones, so it will end up on a C, which is still in our skill. So always important to check that. And um, Well, I think um, we are starting to get something interesting. Um, I think I would have this come in right here. So I would um, maybe do that. And I could automate this upwards. Automated upwards, um, bring this down. So I think that sounds quite good. Um, I'm gonna try to see how it sounds with that duduk instrument that I had. Okay, so I'm not gonna use that. Thank you. 
Okay, that's starting to sound cool. Um, then this one can be called um, down, sweep, short. Um, give it a greenish color. That green. No. That green. No. That. Yeah. And I'm gonna put that inside the effects track. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all good. So let's take all of this crap out of here, since I'm not using it anyway. It's only cluttering up the space that we have. Um, just make it like that. We don't need those things. Um, I'm going to move these three to the top. Like that, I'm just gonna do that. So that all looks pretty much good right now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I need to go in here and color this clip like that. So yeah, um, I'm just going to play you this one more time. So that's what we have so far. Um, episode 7 is done. I think this starts to sound pretty good. Um, the bass needs some more work. Um, I think the bass that kicks in right here is a little bit too much. Um, I want to tone it down a little bit so that we're not really going to get that much power out of the bass like we're getting now. Um, I want to preserve that power for the drop. So I'm gonna tone this down afterwards, but um, for now I think we've done a pretty good job um, at getting uh, at least some bass going, you know. Um, creating the bass is for me always the most difficult thing in making music, so um, I spend a lot of time on my bass um, because it's definitely worth it and you definitely wanna, um, you wanna have a lot of control over it and that requires a lot of work. So um, yeah, if you like these videos, then subscribe to this YouTube channel. There's new video tutorials every Tuesday. Um, every Tuesday we have a video tutorial about this particular track. And there's video tutorials in between there too, if I have time to make them. Um, 
for all of you guys who went to my website in the past week and found out that they got an error message. I know I'm all aware. And the thing is, I was um, working on my website. I was trying to find out ways to uh, make the website more efficient, more streamlined and more easier to use. So right now the website was really complicated and it became that because I, it, it became like that because it took me about two years to make this website. And I spent two years developing the website as, as I went, adding more and more stuff, adding new features. And now I came to the point where the website is so complicated on the back end of it that it's really difficult for me to actually maintain the website. So what I did, or what I, actually what I decided to do, is um, sort of like redo the website. So... I did that and I made a new version of the website which looked much better and then I thought you know if I'm doing this then I might as well also upgrade everything on my web host um, like you know my website is, is running on a certain kind of uh, CMS software content management system and um, you use that to manage the content on your website and there was a new version a uh, big upgraded, uh, upgraded version to the version that I was using. So since that's much better for security reasons and stuff like that, I decided to upgrade and I did that. And the upgrade totally screwed up my website. Um, I was kind of expecting that to happen because it's a heavily modded website. Um, a lot of custom features that I've added. So it would be naturally um, that it... It, it, it doesn't really um, work too well with the new update. And we got I got all kinds of errors. However, I was still able to get into the back end of the website. So I'm, I'm still able to look into the whole website itself. Um, but I just can't see the front of the website. I had this happen in the past. And um, when that happened, I lost my entire website. This time, however, I've been really smart, backed up everything. And... Um, so I have a full backup and um, I restored that backup and by restoring the backup, I got the website back. However, nobody will be able to see the homepage right now. I don't know why, but um, somehow with the backup setting up, uh, somehow with um, bringing that backup back. So um, I, I uploaded the backup and made that and brought it all back. But it still has problems connecting to the database of my website. I don't know why, but um, that actually made me um, make a big de decision. And that decision is that I'm actually going to be making my website all the way from the ground up again. So I'm now working on a new website, which is running the new updated CMS system, so the updated content management system. And... The website is going to be much faster. It, it's it's much more streamlined, faster. It's easier to use. It looks cleaner, and it generally is just a big improvement to what it is. However, I'm not going to lose everything like um, I did last time. This time, I have a full backup of my database, so I still have all the users. I still have all the products that are sold to users, and I still have all the users that actually bought a membership. So. All that information is preserved and I've already brought that into the new website. The new website is already um, on my web host. It's just that you guys cannot access it right now um, because it's still in development. But I've, been mani I've, I've managed to actually bring the most important things of the old website back into the new website. So the only thing left for me to do is actually create the whole visual side of the website. So do all the graphic design and create all the graphics, write all the code for the, for the, for the layout of the website. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, the whole website system itself is already in place and it works like it should. Um, the only thing I haven't done yet is added the forum. I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be uh, doing a fresh install of the forum as well. So that means we're going to lose all the messages on the forum. But I'm also doing that with a reason. Um, the forum became quite cluttered with all kinds of posts. And, you know, I just want to make a fresh start. That's what I want to do. This website is going to be a total upgrade to what I've been doing so far. And um, it's... Um, yeah, I think a fresh start for the forum would be a good thing to do that. I'm also going to make sure that... Um, 
all this stuff, how the forum and the website works together, um, is much more streamlined as well. I've been using some weird hacks on my old website to make those two things work together. And I found out that there are much, um, much more efficient ways to do that these days. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of work left to do for me, but I hope to have the new website online somewhere at the end of this week or somewhere during the next week. So in the upcoming two weeks, you should expect the new website to be online. And um, as soon as you uh, get an email message that the new website is online, as a user, you will get an email um, or you will have to look at my Twitter, Facebook or my YouTube channel. As soon as the new website is online, you need to log in with your uh, previous account, the account that you had on the old website. And then it will actually ask you to... Um, to reset your password so you will have to fill in a new password and then you'll be able to access your the, the website like you would. Um, you will also be able to access all your products again and you can download the products. So um, for now, the products are not available. You can download them, um, but that's only going to be for a short little while. And after that, you'll actually be able to um, get back and, and start using them again. So um, yeah, I think that was quite a good explanation of what's going on and why the website is inaccessible right now. Um, I hope you like these videos. If you want to see more, then follow, and su follow, like, subscribe, do everything on the social media profiles like I always say. And um, I hope to see you back next Tuesday. Um, maybe I'll do a base design video in the upcoming week. I, I promised to do more base design videos in the past two weeks, but I haven't done so because of the whole website thing. So I'm working too much on the website to actually be doing base design videos. But I have a couple of base design videos ready. They are planned to be recorded and I'll get to that as soon as possible. So yeah, other than that, I hope you like this and I'll see you back next week. Peace.